So I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in favor of this. I'm not for this. The symbol of, it's represented by the symbol of the fasces. Notice, and you've seen this before, right? On the, on the back of a dime was the symbol of the fasces. It was these sticks, and they were all bundled together with this broadhead iron axe on it, like a battle axe, okay? I actually, um, I actually see something in the scriptures that alludes to that. Here it is, you see it again. On the great seal, you have in the eagle's talons, you have all of the 13 arrows bundled together. These are weapons of warfare. In other words, unless we all unite together, we can't fight the battle. That's what that symbol represents. It's in the halls of Congress. Congress meets, and every time they open their doors and walk in the congressional halls, they're facing the symbol of the fasces, which basically means we can't win the war unless we're all joined together, and we join together so that the iron axe head can rule over us. There's a story in the Bible. I, I've wondered at this story for a long time, and I think now it... It kind of makes sense. I want you to remember the flood, something that was buried under the flood. Pharaoh and his armies representing the enemies being cut in pieces. Osiris in the flood. I want you to think about that because there's a story in the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 5. These men were cutting down trees to build a house. and But as one is felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. Think of something that falls, okay? Fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick. A stick. The, the bundles that's on the fasces is a bundle of sticks. Cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron, think of the iron kingdom in Daniel chapter 2. The iron did do what? It rose up. We know that iron sinks. Think of the Titanic. It was made of iron, and it sank. Okay, think of the Iron Kingdom down at the bottom of the sea, buried under the ocean. John said in Revelation 13, I saw a beast do what? Rise up out of the sea. He rose to the surface of the sea. And the iron did swim. The battle axe of the Antichrist, the king of the new world order, he can only rise together when all the sticks have been finally bundled together. That's, that's Isis gathering together the body of Osiris and putting them all back together so he could rule as, as one king over one whole earth under one mystery religion with one currency. The, we, had, we talked about the United Nations, the European Union. This has been worked on ever since World War II. The European Union joining all of the nations of Europe together. And I dealt with this before in the, in the video that we did called the Babel Conspiracy concerning September 11th. I noticed this, this just blows me away. Let's go back to Babel. They were building a tower which represented the man's elevation to Godhood. Which represent, let's make Osiris, the Antichrist, the beast, king over us once again. Nimrod, king over the entire world. But they, they left off building. It was unfinished. It was undone. It, it's, it's not all put together yet. You see that symbol of the old Tower of Babel. The European Union put their parliament building in Strasbourg, France, and the guy who designed it and the people said, yeah, that's exactly what we want right there. It looks exactly like the unfinished building of the Tower of Babel. You know what the EU is saying? We're going we're gonna to finish it. We're going to put it all back together again. Let's, so all of the nations of Europe now, whether they have kings or prime ministers or whatever, they're going to drop their sovereignty and give the sovereignty of their nation over, not to the single nation, but to the collective. If we all work together, think of what we can do. You hear that out of politicians you hear it out of ministers from all religions. Just think of what we can do if we were all together. Think of what we could do. That's the spirit of Mystery Babylon trying to rebuild the Tower of Babel once again. So that's political unity. So that's why, that's why you hear all of the nations. That's why, that's why Leon Panetta gets in front of Congress. And he is pretty adamant. I watched what he said at length. I listened to what he said. And Leon Panetta, Secretary of Defense of the United States of America, was pretty insistent 
that the United States Army, the military, which is supposed to be under the singular direction of Congress, and the executive, the chief executive of the United States, which is the president, Leon Panetta is basically saying, we'll do whatever the, uh, the NATO uh, alliance tells us to do, whatever, we'll do whatever the United, if the United Nations tells us to go to Syria, that's what we're going to do. In other words, we now belong to the collective, our national sovereignty given to us by the Constitution doesn't mean anything anymore. That's why we see the Arab League, the Arab nations, 22 of them banding together, the European Union banding together. At some point, all of the nations are going to join together to be as one people once again so that the king can reign over them all. That's the Antichrist, the beast. Now let's deal with monetary unity. Why is money so important? I want you to think of Mystery Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots, and I've mentioned this before. Why, what is it, the one thing that harlots m most love more than anything, including harlotry? Money. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 9, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men, and drown men in destruction. Think of the flood, the love of money. Drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. So, all of the nations are going to get together. Why is it that all of the currencies have to get together? Because... You cannot, my, I, have a, I had a guy that I used to work for in construction. He was a good man, good Christian man, but he was a businessman. And he used to tell me, Mike, have you ever heard of the Golden Rule? This is when I was first working in construction and I didn't know anything. And I, I was young and full of myself and thought I could run everything by myself. And he said, Hoggart, have you ever heard of the Golden Rule? And I said, well, yeah, I think so. He said, he who has the gold rules. And I went, you know, that makes a lot of sense. And he was just kidding. He wasn't trying to desecrate the Bible or anything like that. But the idea was, is that you cannot control everybody unless you control all of their money. And this is about total control. And so every nation in the world, for some reason, has all had a different currency. That's all about to change. You have institutions such as the World Bank. Notice the scattered sections of the world being joined together. You have the International Monetary Fund joining all of the, the, uh, the currencies of the world together. So you'll see news stories come out on Reuters and Drudge Report and World Net Daily and all these other uh, news agencies throughout the world because every time some people get together and meet and talk about money, they're always going to try to talk about how we need a singular global currency. And can it happen? Let's go back to the European Union. The, the European Union wasn't always called the European Union. It was called the European Common Market. They had as their goal, along with the political unity that they were forming, they had as their goal... One single currency. Rather, instead of France using the franc and the Germans using the mark and the British using the pound and all of these others that are being used, instead of them using all of these other currencies, 50 years ago, the, e, the euro, which is the European currency, didn't exist. And just in 50 years' time now, when you go to Europe, that's what you have to use. A single common currency. You're going to hear them talk about a global currency. Putting all of the money together for one big gigantic reason. See, it all goes back to the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. It's all about... Global currency unity. The beast knows that he cannot control everybody in the world unless he controls the money. Jesus alluded to that as well. When they asked him about paying taxes, Jesus picked up a coin and said, 
whose picture on this is on this coin? Whose inscription? And they said, Caesar. And then Jesus said, therefore, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. You see, you need to understand that if you're going to be the king, you have to control the money. And so Isis, this harlot woman, the one thing that she loves more than fornication is having all the money in the world. And as long as all the nations have scattered currency, she can't have it all. So they're going to join together all of the currencies of the world together. So we've looked at political unity, um, economic unity. Now we go back to those stories we talked about at the beginning where the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Pope are now getting along. The Pope is reconciled with the Greek Orthodox Church. They've welcomed the Jews in. They've welcomed the Muslims in. By the way, the, the Vatican. The Vatican seems to be pretty much the ringleader of joining all the religions together. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. I'll show you how that works here in a little bit. But I want you to, I want you to think about this. We read those verses earlier that talked about the adversaries of God. And if you are adverse to God, if you're not really on God's side, even though you look religious, if you're not really on God's side, God scatters you and he confuses your language and he cuts you in pieces and he divides you up. Now, is it a goal of God to have everyone together as one? Yes, we'll see how that works in a little bit. It's not man's job, by the way, to bring all the religions together as one. We'll see from the scriptures that belongs to God and God alone. And there's one way in which to do it. So here's what happened. You have all these religious denominations jumping up. And here's what has happened, especially in the last 40 years. God has sent confusion amongst even the denominations and the churches. Why? Because they would not follow his ways. They actually became adverse to the gospel. So God said, I'm going to scatter you in pieces. You're not going to be holy anymore. You're going to be confused. Just exactly what I did at B -b 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 Babel. That's the spirit that I'm going to pour out to you. So you have, and I reference this a lot, you have multiple translations of the Bible. And let's not kid ourselves. They don't all say the same thing. If you compare one translation with another, and I don't care which two it is, they're not going to say the same thing. That's confusion, and that is not God's way. But God has sent that spirit of confusion into the denominations, into the churches, into the ministries, he sent a confusion of languages to them so that they all don't speak the same thing. Notice Isaiah 20, chapter 1, verse 21. Notice, I, I read this years ago, and God just really dealt with me about this and helped me. How is the faithful city, I want you to think about a church or a denomination, at one time they were right on with God. They were faithful. How is the faithful city become and harlot. What used to be the good guys, what used to be the good denominations, what used to be the good churches, the good ministries, they used to be faithful. Now they've harloted themselves out against God and as such,